One of the most important ideas in drawing is the concept of suggestion. This is where we take a full understanding of what is there when we're drawing something, but we choose selectively to only draw a small portion of it, to suggest it. This can be used more broadly in a number of ways. If we're painting, often what we want to do is suggest form. We don't want to render at all, we just want to suggest some of it. We might want to lose edges in one area and find them in another. This allows us to control the hierarchy of detail. We also might not have the resolution or the physical space to actually draw all of the things. So you might actually have to suggest them because you only have a small amount of space to work with. You're really trying to get in there and just suggest a larger set of details on a very small drawing. One of the best ways to actually understand this is with teeth and a lot of the challenges that come with trying to draw and render and paint or ink create line work of teeth that come up for artists. This is one of the trickiest things in the beginning. It's really easy to get that awful feeling that looks like there are lines between every teeth, like everyone's got stuff stuck in their teeth. And one of the biggest sets of advice that is often given is don't draw any of the teeth, just leave it all white. And that is something you see a lot of artists employ. But I think this idea speaks to a much larger, more important concept of suggestion that actually applies to all drawing. And it also speaks to one of the fundamental things we have to learn in the beginning. And that is in order to suggest, in order to do these things where we subtly put in a few lines to suggest things like teeth, we actually have to go back and understand exactly what's happening there. And it's often this dichotomy that feels a little bit unfair. In order to loosely suggest things and be very sketchy, you actually need to know all of the details of what's there underneath. What I'm gonna do in this video is use teeth as a way to explain this concept because I think, as I said, they're a really, really good window into this idea. Anyway, hopefully you'll join me. This is gonna be a longer laid back style video. Think of it like a drawing lesson. We're just gonna go through this step by step, do some drawing and understand this concept. Anyway, let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, the same style that I create all my comics and illustrations in, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop, developing your own simple, reliable line and color process. It's free, the link will be in the description. Go check it out. All right, just quickly before we jump over to the drawing part of the demo, I wanna share with you some stuff digitally in Photoshop here, because I think this is also a good way of explaining this. Here I've got a cover, which is the character Moda from Star Atlas. Again, that's the one that you see behind me on the screen there. And what you can see here is that I have suggested a lot of these teeth. Now. The key idea that we're trying to get at here is that often when you are actually going around and drawing teeth, what we do is we don't draw it all, right? We keep it very, very simple and that allows us to just kind of keep things loose. So the actual thing that I've drawn here is a little bit like this. These are the lines that I'm actually drawing. I've got indication here of the canine teeth and then probably what we have is some something like that now I've been very suggestive in the way I've done it and so you can see again I haven't precisely lined up all of the little kind of divots and things that are meant to represent the gums but nevertheless I have given a pretty good indication of what should be there. And so this is this is really the idea is that in order to kind of suggest, right, and and create things that feel a little bit looser, which is often what we need, um, this is often sort of what we visually iconically understand when we're looking at an illustration. We kind of just see the teeth there and we're not really thinking about like, oh, how many teeth there are? We just kind of see this white shape within the mouth. But it's really important to understand the structure there. And what you do once you understand the structure is then suggest it. So that's really what we're gonna talk about in this video. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now let's look at the basics of suggestion 
what I'm really talking about here. Now, we can understand this concept very easily by just thinking about a line. And this is one of the primary sort of basic drawing theory things that you'll often hear. Now, if we consider that we have a line, this is the structure, this is the form, this is the thing that we actually want to draw. There's a number of ways that we can hint at that line, however. We can put maybe an indication of certain parts of that line, and we're still going to see the basic idea that there is meant to be a line there. Now, when we're just drawing lines, that, that's not that interesting. Another thing that we can think about is that if we consider that we need to delineate one space from another, often what we're going to be doing is working with defining tone or shadow on one side of this form. And what you might do is, yeah, find that you can really clearly define and delineate in some places and then more loosely in others. But nevertheless, this feeling of there being like a really solid line there will be will persist. And this is because we as humans are quite good at pattern recognition. We used to from a visual development standpoint, be walking through the forest looking for the tiger, so to speak. So we're able to kind of look at the idea of there being a leaf, right? And be able to suggest that. So if I think about there being a leaf, often what you have is like many leaves and we can probably perceive the pattern, right? We can understand the pattern recognition quite easily by looking at a limited set of information. Now again, this is not necessarily the best example of this, but this is often part of the major set of ideas that we're trying to solve for as artists, depending on whether we're using line or tone, whatever. We can also look at this same idea if we think about a series of overlapping forms. Often what we have is a drawing that is done lightly of a series of forms that are overlapping. And again, these will clarify as we progress. Right? What I have is a solid series of things that are getting further and further away. Now, there's a couple of challenges here that we often deal with as artists. Again, one is that if you just draw everything, it tends to flatten it out. So that's the number one problem we're trying to solve. If we just outline everything, it doesn't feel realistic. So often what we're going to do is put more emphasis on, you know, potentially the shadow side of some of these forms. We're going to suggest where there is shadow, and this is going to help us. We also might suggest where we're going to expect to see some form of ambient occlusion, which is where the light finds it hard to get into crevices. So, you know, you could sort of perceive this as like looking at my hands, right? As they get closer and closer together, right? We're gonna see there's like a dark shadow there. Even though you can see quite clearly here, like directly through my two fingers here, at some point it gets quite dark there and you can see this basic concept um, at play all the time in life, right? As we sort of touch, get this down here, so we can sort of see it, right? As I touch something, right, I get a darker and darker shadow. And that's just because we have the occlusion of ambient light when we're dealing with crevices. You can see this by looking at wrinkles on a face, um, in the nostrils, or again, in situations where you have lines between teeth where these things get quite close together, um, also the line of the mouth. These are all ambient occlusion lines. So what you tend to find is that we suggest this form and we don't necessarily draw all of it. Bom, bom, bom. And this also can be an issue if we look at things that are far away, right? We might actually start to be really suggestive because this is going to give us a better feeling of things receding into the distance. Now, this is a bit of a mixed bag, right? We're, we're doing a demo on teeth, but this is a really easy way for us to understand the concept is that humans, including you and your viewer, are quite good at understanding this pattern-based recognition of form. 
and we will make sense out of this. So you don't need to draw everything. You often only need to know a little bit. But in order to properly figure out and understand where you put these lines, you kind of need to also understand the underlying structure. Where would there be shadows or ambient occlusion? How can we suggest those? How can we lose those shadows? What is going to happen? Where is the light coming from? You can only understand that by understanding the form, which kind of means that you are taking a proper rendering of this that is fully rendered with everything um, resolved. And then actually what you're doing is just selectively suggesting small elements of it. Another way that we can understand this very simply is to look at how we would render some simple forms. So if we look at a, a very classic drawing demonstration style exercise, we have a number of egg-shaped forms. They are casting a shadow on the ground. Now the question is how do we show this form? So not all of these things are necessarily related to the idea of suggestion and what we do with, with teeth, but these are all fu fundamental concepts that will help you understand this and draw better. So if we think about how we render the idea of a simple geoform, right? we have light coming from a particular angle. This is going to terminate at some point where we're going to get our core shadow or terminator. Boom. And I'm going to roughly render that in in a method with some hatching. So this is where we need to understand what we do need to know. And this is everything, right? We need to know as much as possible. I have my ambient occlusion. That's also going to come up here and be affecting the bottom of this. Again, I'm going to have my termination point of this shadow, right? Where the, sh where the shadow actually appears again is going to be based on the light source. These are all fundamental drawing things. And there would be an, a, a large variety of other um, concepts that we could apply to this to make it look good. Often when we're painting, as well as when we're drawing, what we're trying to do is think about, if I can just find a, a razor, I think this little bit will do, just take that back. Often what we're needing to do is suggest or think about selectively what we do and don't show. So I can show the same type of form here by rendering behind It's all a matter of what you want to show and what your art style is. Not all art styles are going to keep all of the rendering. Um, these may be treated, again, in, in a variety of ways. But there's a number of ways that you can suggest the detail, you can suggest the light source, you can suggest the ambient occlusion. And these are all different ways that you basically represent the form. And depending on what you're doing, you can choose whether or not you make the background darker, the object lighter, or vice versa, whether or not you actually render all of the shadow, whether or not you do it in a stylized manner. There are many, many ways you basically get a person to say, ah, I know what this thing is you're trying to show me. All right, so how does this apply to teeth, Tim? You've, you've, you've been going on for a while, let's draw some teeth. What are we dealing with here? So again, let's look at a standard set of teeth, right? We got a smile here. And if you remember the teeth anatomy video that I did, I will link it down below. And at the end of the video, if you haven't seen it, this is where understanding as much of the structure as you can is really gonna come in handy. So here I have my incisors. I've got two incisors here. I've got two incisors there, right, on either side. I've got my canine, and then I'm going to have two premolars here, and then, again, molars back there that you probably are not going to see. Below, again, we've got the incisors here. Maybe 
a little bit wider than that. And th this is such a fundamental idea for drawing of all kinds. All kinds of drawing relate to this fundamental concept, which is we need to understand anatomy. We need to understand the form, the structure. We need to look at what's going on. Again, these I'm, I'm exaggerating the, the differences in these teeth quite a bit. <laughs> a lot of teeth don't have this uh, delineation between the molars and the canines, etc. So, so this is what we could understand as structure. Right, and on top of that, we've got some lips. Bump, bump, and here we've got the smile. So, likewise, there there probably is going to be a lot of information and anatomical knowledge. Let's try and adjust this line. It's going to be a lot of information and anatomical knowledge inside the mouth as well. So if we think about it all times, even if you're trying to draw a very small smile, right? So we've got the same thing here, right? We're thinking about uh, how many teeth are there. Got the same thing, little, you know, right? Da, 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 da. Right, at some point you kind of get lost. You're like, ah, uh, there's uh, like, you're, you're limited with all artistic mediums by the size of the pencil. So I could be like, well, let's sharpen the pencil. But then the question is, well, do I just render everything as much as I can? Because that means that, you know, you're going to have to render every little um, detail on the, the teeth, right? Every little imperfection, every little chip in the tooth, um, all the striations on the teeth, you're going to have to render that if you're going to draw another sort of smaller set somewhere else because we're always thinking about the hierarchy of detail. The things that are in focus that are our primary read in all art are the things that are going to, in, in most cases, have the most detail and resolution. So this is a problem that often comes up. We have an understanding that all teeth and all people and all things, flowers, plants, you know, animals, rocks, trees, clouds, everything always at all times has the full anatomical detail there. Even if it's really far in the distance, again, we don't see it, so we perceive it as simpler because our eyes lose resolution at some point, but it's always there. So we understand that there's less detail in the distance, but that doesn't mean we can not We can kind of avoid drawing it. As artists, we always need to figure out and know where it is so that we can suggest it. So what you see is that often what I have to do is make choices about which ones of these lines actually make it into the finished drawing and this is going to be very much relevant and based on your style right right it's going to be based on your style it's going to be based on your tools right what what if i have a giant oil pastel i'm obviously going to have to go about this a complete different way i'm, I'm really going to have a hard time drawing a line there um, and it, it also has to do with the size right slash resolution now we, we could think of resolution in the digital sense but i'm just meaning it in terms of sort of clarity right getting a certain type of clarity um and the other thing we need to think of is our hierarchy questionably spelt of detail again i'm an artist guys all right so how do we sort of get this basic idea here Right. Let's take this back so that it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on because I don't want to have to go and do too much <laughs> rendering here. So, um, which, which is to say, again, it it, it it easy for me doing this demo to uh, you know create too many lines and then the whole point is lost. There's a number of ways you can go about this. If this is the character on the cover and your de your style is very different to mine, you can see again all I did was put a few lines in there. If your style is more detailed you render the living daylights out of these, right? But again, a lot of it is about suggesting because even then you're going to have to suggest some of these indentations, some of these marks and some of the things here because you're still going to want the focus to be on these front teeth. So yeah, a lot of it is understanding what do you put in? Like what is your style? So let's imagine that I am going to try and render these, right? Because I think that's important. What I'm going to focus on, again, we had the idea of a line there. Now, going back to that idea right in the beginning, right, we have a line. 
the line is the delineation of one tooth next to another. Now we put the line in, but I have a black wing matte pencil. I can go really, really dark if I need to. The question is, where do I go the darkest? And what I'm going to look for are areas of suggesting ambient occlusion, which is going to be in these gaps in the teeth here, potentially. And I'm going to focus on putting in more shadow underneath, right? And where the teeth meet. So again, we've got some teeth like this. I can put this in, but it's all a matter of understanding where I'm going to suggest. And maybe back here, what I'm going to do is just focus on the, right? Just the suggestion there. And actually what I often do if I'm kind of doing this is suggest with some fairly abstract marks that would be you know, quite loose if I was doing this as a painting. I'm kind of suggesting the shadows that go there. And what that means is these teeth, even though they're there, are being suggested. Again, I've got my, so you can see there, in, in my effort to just figure out where that teeth is, that tooth is, that canine is, I'm kind of putting a little bit too much source on it, right? And by that, I'm just, I'm rendering it too much, right? It's, it's coming to life too much. It's, it's having too much, right? Too much focus. So again, the idea is we put in some of these lines, some of them less so, and I focus on similar to this, right? I have, here's the line I want but I'm actually gonna draw more of it like this and maybe a bit up here, and this will suggest the structure. As I said, so much of this is gonna depend on your particular style, but that is the basic idea. And, and thinking about it this way is how you avoid that feeling where, again, we're drawing everything and it feels like everything's flat, everything has too much of an outline, we're not seeing any hierarchy of detail. So again, there are many ways we would go about sort of rendering this up. I work in a bit of a comic booky style, so you know I'm really focusing on the the shadow shapes. But again, what you'll find is the shadow shapes are a major part of good drawing. So even when we come to the way the gums move across, again, what I'm going to do is focus on putting a little bit of a darker line up above. And this all comes down to the fundamental idea here, which is we don't need to draw the whole line. We're thinking about what we actually need to represent. Now, let's look at this. I'll sharpen my pencil a tiny bit so you can see what's happening. All right, let's sharpen this guy. But still, what I don't want to do is go in there and, and hit it really hard. So what you might find here is that, yeah, the, the only thing I need to suggest is just a slight indication of maybe the first few, right? And a few under here. So in this case, I'm focusing on the major iconic line of the teeth, which is the gap between the teeth. And yeah, then I'm gonna focus on the way that the teeth and the gums meet. So again, might be a little bit hard to see. I'll see if I can blow this up um, in the edit. But yeah, this is just the fundamental idea of like how much resolution do we have? What is my style? What is the tool? How much resolution can I actually get with the pencil? How much, uh, how big is the actual drawing? And how am I managing the hierarchy of detail, right? Is this literally a cover just of teeth? <laughs> in which case the hierarchy of detail becomes like which tooth is the most important? Which tooth is my primary read? Or is this just a very small part of a much larger, more interesting story? All right, so let's put a pin in this because I think this describes the basic idea. And as a last bonus thing, what I'm going to do is look at how we might represent this concept in a more stylized way. So this is where we can look at you know, how you might do this in manga. So with manga or something like that, what we're going to do is we're going to line, we're going to look at the iconic nature of teeth. And this is where we have the structure that we might have, right? Again, I can think about like, let's draw it all, right? Draw all the teeth, right? Here I've got the teeth here. 
But what what we're often looking for when we're drawing manga or something like that is the idea of suggesting the iconography of the mouth, which is kind of that we have a line here, we have this canine tooth, and then we have the line there, and that's often what you see. So we have the teeth here, and we have a line here. Often we lose that line, and we just kind of put in the canine here, and that's kind of all we have. All right, so we got smile here. All right, bump, something like that. And what we're trying to do is just think about what are some iconic marks that we can make that will help. Now, you may or may not want to or need to put in a lot of this other suggestion, but this is frequently how we are deriving these marks. Now, what you might find is like you just see some manga artist that you like drawing like this, and yeah, then you're kind of like, cool, you know, like I'm just going to sort of copy that. But it is important to understand what people are doing. If you put in a few little marks like this, again, what you might get is like a pretty good indication of, you know, what teeth feel like. But if you don't know how people are getting at these iconic marks, then it's very difficult for you to make your own or for you to go and, you know, draw it from a different angle or something like that. So what you also see frequently, um, if you look at some Heio Miyazaki sort of sketches or something that is a little bit more on the cartoony end, if I just get a book out here, is frequently what we're having is that these lines just get mushed into one and we just see either a white void or we see a very, very simple little mark here. See if we can find some from this great Porco Rosso book. So you see in most cases, again, Porco doesn't have any teeth at all, uh, although he does have some here when he kind of really opens his mouth. And again, that mimics the, the iconography of what we see. If we look at, again, some of these faces here, you see they basically just they sort of mush all of the teeth into one little shape there. So that's frequently what you need to do as well is like just simplify and think about how far does your style simplify, right? Again, it might just literally be like, hey, we have like a little bit of teeth there um, and that's it, right? And again, you know, the, the wider the smile, right? Again, maybe you see a tongue or something like that, but you know, that's, that's all we're really looking at. So it's all a matter of simplifying and creating these stylistic choices. This is very much up to you exactly how you use these ideas, but I think it's important to understand that we're all working in the same artistic tradition. I feel like even if you're looking at very stylized cartoony faces and um, anime style looks, there is still a basic understanding of what's happening. All that's going on is the artist is saying the style that I'm working in doesn't require that much detail because why? Because we're looking at a hierarchy of detail. The noses are drawn in a very sim simple way, right? If we're looking at simple cartoony stylized um, looks, right? We often have very stylized abstract faces. And if we've got stylized abstract faces, we also need to have stylized abstract teeth, right? Because otherwise the teeth will look weird if there's too much detail, right? So there's not much detail here. There probably won't be as much detail elsewhere. Basic hierarchy of detail concepts, right? Same with the ears, same with everything else, right? We're just trying to simplify and simplify and your world gets simplified based on the size that you have to draw very, very basic things. You need to think about hierarchy of detail, how all these pieces fit together. So anyway, that's, I digress. Um, hopefully that sort of explains it if you're sort of thinking about how these things apply to different styles.
And uh, yeah, hopefully this idea has been interesting. I think it's one of the most important concepts. You often run into it early on, especially when you're drawing teeth. Um, so yeah, let me know if this has been helpful down below in the comments. Other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.